Hey guys, this is Steve Huff from stevehuffphoto.com. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, it's been a few weeks, it's been a while, actually more than that, since the Nikon Z6 and Z7 have launched, right? And there's a million and one, maybe a million and three reviews here on YouTube. There's thousands of reviews, most likely online. This camera has been reviewed to death, in and out, upside down, twisty around, in every which way you can review it. So you can go see those videos if you want the nitty gritty details, there's no shortage of that. But if you wanna hear about my experience with the camera, what I think about it uh, when shooting it compared to the Canon EOS R, a Sony a7 III, uh, then stay tuned and I'm going to give you what I feel, or tell you what I feel about the Nikon Z6. Keep in mind, I do not script out my videos. I just speak from the top of my head uh, what I feel, what comes from my heart, what I like, what I don't like, and that's how I've been reviewing cameras for 11 years now. I'm here to tell you what I like about the Nikon Z6, my time shooting with it, and what I don't like about the Nikon Z6. So it's 2019 and full frame cameras are huge now. Sony started this whole mirrorless full frame thing about five years ago with the original Sony A7 and A7R. I love those cameras when they came out, but that was five plus years ago. Tech has moved on and we now have cameras that are faster, stronger, um, and give us more uh, image quality in the form of dynamic range. Uh, detail, different color signatures, and as of right now, we have choices in mirrorless, full frame mirrorless from Nikon with the Z6 and Z7, from Canon with the EOS R, which I'm using to film this right now. Sony with a whole slew of cameras out there in the A7 and A9 series. So mirrorless, full frame is huge right now. Who knows what 2019 will bring. We're going to see more from micro four thirds. We're going to see more in medium format, but full frame is now kind of, oh, and let's not forget APS-C, right? But full frame is kind of getting uh, to be the sweet spot with mirrorless cameras, and for good reason. They're not as big as a DSLR. They're fast. Uh, there's benefits over DSLRs. Uh, the EVFs these days are fantastic. Um, and truth be told, after shooting all lines of these cameras, Sony, Canon, Nikon, there's minor differences. They're all fantastic cameras. You, in other words, you can't go wrong. There's not a stinker in the bunch, right? If you like Sony and their lens choice and what they offer, you're not gonna go wrong buying a Sony. If you like Canon and their lenses, or you own Canon lenses, uh, and you like the Canon color signature, color science, you can't go wrong with the EOS R, even though there's a lot of people out there claiming that it's bad for this or that. The EOS R has been dependable, rock solid, amazing image quality, and great video for my needs. I love it, and I've thought about buying a second as a backup. Then you have Nikon with the Z6 and Z7. If you own Nikon glass or like that Nikon color signature, or you want one of these mirrorless cameras to give you the sharpest, most biting image, that's gonna go to the Nikon. Now, I noticed shooting the Nikon Z6, it is giving me the crispest, sharpest images uh, from the raw files of any of these other brands. Um, whether it's the lens coming into play or the sensor, I think it's a combination of both. Nikon has created some really fantastic lenses and um, the output out of the camera is wonderfully sharp, crisp, and beautiful. It also has that Nikon color science, that Nikon look, which I kind of, if I had to describe it, I would say it's more filmic, um, it's a little richer in the color, it's great for landscapes, uh, and some maybe if you want that more raw, gritty feel when you're shooting out on the streets, Nikon's always been great with that. Canon, in my experience, excels with skin tones, and they almost have like a pastel-like color that many find pleasing. Um, Sony has its own kind of color, which I always think is a little more digital looking, and some of you are gonna yell at me for saying that, but it's true. It, it just really is, and I speak from the heart, I speak honestly, 
and I just share my experiences. I've shot them all. Let's get to the shooting. I was out over the last couple of weeks shooting the Nikon Z6 and I've enjoyed it. I like the feel, the build is really solid. Uh, of course, when you're coming from Sony and Canon, the controls are different so you have to learn them. Um, but I will say, um, the camera did fail me in an area that I use a camera a lot. Uh, shooting live bands. I was out recently shooting a couple of different live bands and in both scenarios I had to turn on the manual focus because the autofocus would haunt, it wouldn't lock on, uh, it would miss focus and half of my shots using autofocus um, were out of focus and that came into play whether I was using the 24 to 70 or the 35 to 1.8. On the flip side when I would shoot with the Canon EOS R, that focus was so fast and instant in these same venues, I thought it was defective and not working. And then I later found out it's just that fast. The Canon EOS R with lenses like the 50 f1.2 or even the 24 1.4, um, the autofocus is blazing fast even in low light situations. And I love that. So the autofocus, the image quality is punchy with great colors from both cameras, but the Nikon seems to give a little bit more of that filmic look, that richer look um, to the images, which is the differences I was talking about Nikon versus Canon. So with the Canon, I feel you're getting a better autofocus system, at least for me and my use, and I tested it with video, uh, and I tested it with photos. For video, the Nikon Z6 would sometimes lose focus on my face or my subject and focus on what's behind it. The Canon has yet to fail me in any way with autofocus for video. For photos, again, in low light, using the 24 to 70 and 35 1.8, the Nikon would miss and hunt in that low light scenario where the Sony and Canon had no issues. But if you're someone who shoots landscape, uh, street shooting, uh, you own Nikon glass um, already, or you just like the vibe of the Nikon because they all feel different. Now, ergonomically, I think the Canon is the best for my hand, then the Nikon, then the Sony coming in last place. I hate to say this because I love Sony and I've shot with them for years, but things improve in certain areas, right? So to me, the Sony has some improving to do with the ergonomics when you compare it to the Canon and Nikon, which are both really, really good. Control-wise, I think the Nikon takes the cake here. They give you the traditional photography controls. They're where you want them. They're intuitive. Um, the EVF is fantastic on the Canon, on the Nikon. But when I was out shooting um, with the Nikon, I still enjoyed it. I still came back with some cool looking images. The in-body image stabilization is here on the Nikon. So that is good if you have a static subject, Ibis, right? It's really useless if you have anything that's moving because Ibis is not going to control movement, right? It's really a solid camera. One thing that I didn't like about it was you have to use the special memory cards, the XQD, QXD, whatever they're called. I never bought one. I didn't own one. So I actually, in order to use the camera to try it out and see how I liked it, I had to go to Amazon and buy a card and a reader, a Sony reader, and it cost me $200 just to buy a card and a reader just to use the camera. So if you're gonna buy a Nikon Z6, you have to get a memory card for it. It will not take SD, will not take the old compact flash. Leads me to the dual card slots. There's only a single card slot here, single card slot in the Canon. To me, it's no big deal whatsoever. Uh, I, I never had a problem shooting with one card slot. As a matter of fact, I've shot Sony for the last five years and I had those dual card slots, but guess what? I really only ever used one. And even if I used to, it was just as an overflow. I wasn't making a backup. I, I, I don't lose images. Uh, I haven't had failures. So to me, it's not a big deal, but knowing that a failure can happen, I do believe these manufacturers should include two card slots, not only for that fact, but because it makes people more comfortable buying the camera. Um, I love the Canon's flip out LCD. I can look at it right now and see the boxes around my face. The Nikon doesn't have that if you're doing video of yourself, but I don't see the Nikon as a camera you would shoot video of yourself with. It's more of a, uh, if you're gonna use it for video, it's more of you're the cameraman behind the camera, not the, not the guy in front of the camera. That's not a vlogging camera whatsoever, and neither is the Sony. The Canon EOS R can be used as a vlogging camera, though it's a little big, 
and you might as well go take out like a GoPro or a gimbal or something smaller if you're going to do that. Overall, the Nikon Z6 gave me a great experience in handling and feel and control. The build is wonderful. The battery life seems great. Uh, the, the memory card is substantial and solid. It gives that Nikon color and it gives me the crispest, most detailed images of any of these mirrorless cameras. Um, the one thing though I didn't like was the autofocus. I felt the autofocus lagged in performance behind the Canon and Sony and that's one thing that would keep me from going all into the Z6. But with that said, if you own Nikon lenses, if you own Nikon glass, this is a no-brainer choice, but it's, it's a fantastic camera. I think it's two grand for the Z6, which is the lower model. If you want the higher resolution, go the Z7. But personally, if I were to buy one, I'd go with the Z6. You're getting a lot of bang for your buck there. So the Z6 is a very capable camera. It's a beautiful camera. Um, it beats the Canon and Sony in some areas, and it fails in comparison to them in the autofocus. Let's take a look at some photos. All right, we're gonna show some photos here from the Nikon Z6 uh, during the time I had it. Um, this is a low light club. Um, I love this image, the, the red light bulb shining on the band. Uh, wasn't really a challenge for the Nikon Z6. Some cameras do not handle the red very well. This is a 100% crop ISO 3200. There are some uh, uh, hot pixels there I noticed as well though. This shows you how crisp and colorful the Z6 is right here. Just a basic shot while at a restaurant. Again, fries. You can see the crispness, the color signature of the Nikon camera. I also shot one of Debbie here. This was with the 35 F1.8 and we were out later in the week and lo and behold I found Debbie as a pirate at an amusement park. Uh, I mean to me it looks like Debbie so um, <laughs> on we go. There were some blue lights in this music club. Again the Z6 handled it without blowing out uh, everything as some cameras would with lesser dynamic range. Here's a shot with some cool lighting going on. Um, ISO 100. Uh, here's another shot. I love the color and the the impact that the Nikon brings to images like this as as much as I am not a fan of the AF here with the Z6 I do love the color output uh, for live bands it adds some drama and excitement to the shots um, so in that regard it is really cool high contrast you know bold and crisp right here you can see it's very sharp I love the way the Nikon renders the colors this one was a little out of focus but I still liked it here we go, the guitar player again. This was a great show, it was a fun show. I loved shooting it. Um, and one in black and white, I like to convert files to black and white to see how they come across. And to me it looks like a Nikon shot in black and white. Nikon has a unique look. I loved shooting the Nikon uh, and that's about it. So with that said, I wanna thank you guys for watching. This was a quick and easy um, experience review. If you like my videos, thumbs up and subscribe. You'll know that I'll always be honest with you and tell you what I like and what I don't like about a product. If there's a product I don't like at all, I won't review it, which is why you don't see daily videos from me. And if you missed my last video on that, uh, 360 One X camera, that is an amazing little tool. I was so impressed by that, that I'm gonna be going out and shooting it uh, this week some more. Really, really cool camera. If you missed that video, and a lot of you did, check that one out. It's the video right before this. Thank you all, love you all. I will see you next time, bye.